Hello everyone and welcome to another Connect Spider video. So for those of you that follow the channel, you will already know that we just recently purchased a 2021 RT Limited, which replaced our 2016 Can-Am Spider F3 Limited. In today's video, I'm going to give you a full walk around of the new bike. I'm going to point out all the features that I've noticed since we've had it, and I'm going to make some comparisons between it and the F3. So stick around. I hope you enjoy the video. So this is the 2021 Can-Am Spider RT Limited. In 2020 was when BRP changed the design of this bike um, to the current configuration you see it in here. So I'm just going to give you a little walk around and then we will get into some of the features. So when Leslie and I went down shopping, because it was always our intention to get another bike for the 2022 season, we were thinking that we were just going to replace our F3 with a new F3. And I really want to acknowledge Doug Rogers down at Uxbridge Motorsports because he really um, sort of led us towards the RT and in retrospect, I'm glad he did. Um, this bike has a lot more comforts for us for the type of riding we do, which is touring. So what you see on this bike is pretty much stock. The only things that we added to the bike are We went for the BRP driver's backrest, which is super comfortable. Comes way down at the back there to support your back. And I find I really need this when I'm riding to keep me in a good position. Obviously for our needs, we needed a trailer hitch. So we went with the BRP trailer hitch. It was actually already on the bike, so we just had them leave it on there. And the other thing that was already on the bike that we left on, a little bit of tinsel was these RT rad covers. The radiators are behind those covers. And that was one thing that kind of concerned me about this bike. Um, the radiators were kind of wide open to whatever could hit them. So I like the fact that these covers are on there. And uh, they also protect the front of the bike as well. And they look good. So let's start with some of the creature comforts. So this bike, has lots and lots of heated surfaces. Starting with the driver, hand grips are heated and they're controlled right in front of you here, right there. The driver's seat is heated, which I did not have on my last bike. Very nice feature. The passenger seat is also heated and the passenger has their own controls for their heated seats and heated grips. My passenger tells me that that backrest is very comfortable. We had a backrest on the other bike, but she tells me this is way more contoured and way more comfortable. Another thing that she tells me she really likes is the distance between the back of the driver's backrest and her backrest is way bigger. She's got way more room to move it back there. So the back seat in general is just larger. Another thing that we really like is these bigger floorboards. Both the driver and the passenger have nice big areas to put their feet. Leslie says that these are way nicer than having the pegs which were on the F3. So that gives us a lot more variety of where you can put your feet. Also has a nice big brake pedal on it. So technically and mechanically, I did do a kind of a, a quick comparison uh, between the F3 and this RT and the engine is exactly the same. It's the Rotax 1333 cylinder, um, no difference to the horsepower, 115 horsepower, same displacement. I think they've found a bit of a winner there on that engine, um, so I don't think they're gonna mess with that too much. Uh, this bike has 
different shape handlebars than the F3. They're kind of a lower reach than my F3. The F3 had a much higher handlebar. Um, one thing that they definitely changed is these front fenders. It's now a one-piece fender. The F3 had a seam that kind of ran down here. And when you were out, if you got caught out in the rain, the water was just kind of running out of there and it made them all dirty. So that's a, a nice improvement. Overall, the bike is a bit larger um, in all its dimensions than the F3. It's definitely heavier than the F3. It comes in at about 100 pounds more. The actual wheelbase and the width of the bikes, there's very little difference um, in the two and there's absolutely no difference between, um, between the, this bike and the 2021 F3. The riding position on this bike relative to the F3 is quite different. When I'm sitting on the bike, I feel I'm up a lot higher and if you look at the specifications, you are up a lot higher. Um, the seat height is fully three inches different than the F3. On our F3, underneath the passenger seat, uh, there was a, a Schrader valve that you had to adjust um, based on the overall load of the bike. This bike has a self-leveling system in it. So the rear shock um, based on the load um, is self-leveled by a compressor, thus then automatically. As you can see, I have opened all the storage up on the bike. This bike definitely has superior storage to the previous one we had, the F3. These uh, side compartments are big enough to put a helmet in, which would have never happened on the last bike. So a lot more storage in the sides. The front on this bike, the front as we call it in the spider world, is much deeper than the F3, and I think it's actually a bit wider as well. Um, the inside of it is nicely lined with some carpeting. There's some elastic storage areas here at the back and the front. And that zippered area right there is how you access the battery. Uxbridge also includes a battery tender lead so it's easy to plug the bike in for charging. So if we walk around the back of the bike, The rear top case is, I think, about the same size as on the F3, but it has been refined quite a bit. The F3's lid was pretty flimsy when you moved it from side to side, and there was also a little latching mechanism here that you had to deal with when you wanted to close it. And another thing with the F3 top case that we had, aligning this edge here and this here was always uh, a bit of a hit and miss. You had to make sure it went in incorrectly. This one, you just close it. And that's it. Latched all the way closed. So as you can see here, I've started the bike up. Very, very quiet at idle. Has a different sounding exhaust than the F3 for sure. And I just want to kind of show you some of the refinements they've made to the, uh, the bike. From a lighting perspective. So like the F3, it's got lights on the fenders. Um, it's got LED headlights now as opposed to the regular halogen ones on the other one. And they've also added a little bit of uh, lighting tinsel there. I'm going to go around and I'm going to put the high beams on and I'm also going to put the one of the indicators on because that's a change that I really like as well. So as you can see, the turn signal indicators are now located on the fenders. 
Um, on my F3, they were up on the mirrors, on the other side of the mirrors. Um, I like this better. It just, you know, with motorcycles, it's all about visibility. So you want to be seen. And I like those flashers being out there. And if you get down a little lower, they really get bright. And then you can see I've also turned the high beams on, which brings on those two lights in the middle. Another riding feature that we both like is this adjustable windshield. So right now you're seeing it in its fully up position and that is controlled by a switch here. And that's it going all the way down to the bottom. So it just kind of pivots on these brackets right here and then I'll go ahead and put it on all the way back up again. So when that windshield is all the way up and I'm sitting behind it, I can honestly say that you barely even need earplugs when you're riding this bike and I mentioned that in my previous video. The wind protection on this bike is phenomenal. As you can see, there's lots of little wind deflectors and, and uh, things on the body. And um, even up in here, in this area right here, that's more wind deflection. I notice a huge difference in, uh, in, in just general wind protection on this bike. Well, everyone, that's going to bring another Connect Spider video to a close. I hope you've enjoyed my review of our 2021 Can Am Spider RT Limited. We picked it up near the end of the season, so we're all ready for next year. We've already had it out for a couple of rides, and we really, really are enjoying it so far. As always, I really appreciate the time you spend watching our videos. If you like the content, you might want to consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that little bell so you get reminded when we release a new video. So that's it for today, and we'll see you in the next one.